What do we see? Does it pose a risk or a threat? So here's what you're going to do. Scan, assess, and respond. It's a basic security model. It's SAR, okay? So it's pretty easy to look at. The first one is scanning. So when I come in here throughout the day, and you do it every day, women are really good at this. Men, you're aware of this, because you can go to the mall, and a man can sit down and eat his meal inside the food court and not see a thing. But a woman will get, can you believe she was wearing those shoes? Did you see how ugly that, but that did not match. They pay attention to every detail, and that's what I'm talking about, is scanning. When I go to a crime scene, I can go to a shooting or something like that, I can always know if I will go get the female witnesses first, I can get more information from a female witness than I can a male. They have conditioned themselves to study every little detail of everything they see. And they know it and they remember it. And so that's what we have to train ourselves is when we're just walking around on the church. You came in today. You came in today. You were walking up to the doors. Did you see if anybody was in the parking lot? Did you see if anybody parked next to you? What were they wearing? What kind of car was that? Did you hear something? Did you see something? Okay, so be aware. When you're coming onto the campus, I want you to, to be that extra set of eyes and ears. Scanning. Looking. Not hawkeyeing people, not staring through them, but just observing, seeing what you see, taking it in. So what do you do then? You start to assess it. So based on what I am seeing, I start to kind of calculate what are the risk factors. So if I'm talking to an individual on the street and I come up to him and he's constantly kind of looking around like this, um, those are some clues. Those are things I'm looking for. He keeps a hand in a pocket. Those are some other things I'm looking at. I am assessing every individual for the potential of a risk, and that's what you need to do. So you're watching and then you're kind of filtering that through. Does these actions pose a risk? And then uh, ultimately the end is responding. Based upon what I am seeing, what do I need to do? Based upon what I'm seeing, how do I respond? If you are responding in an incident in here, I would assure you, you need to work together. You should never, uh, worst case scenario, if you're going down a hallway, you see somebody coming into a back door, he doesn't belong there, sees you, he takes kind of a, a nervous glance and he's got something in his hand, uh, you know, I'm not asking you to do something alone, but there might be a time where you say, I just had to do what I had to do. I understand that. But make people aware of what's going on, alert people, get help, and work together when you're doing something. So let's look at the next. So scanning. So what are you scanning for? Safety concerns or hazards as you walk up on the campus. Do you see something, a bag, a backpack, something just kind of sitting out of place, a door that was propped open? Um, do you see vandalism? On, a, on Do you see broken glass? Okay, those are things we need to kind of bring. Oh, I, yeah, I'm sure the church is aware of that. They've got a security team. Okay, well, maybe they're not aware. So if you come on and you see these things, bring it to somebody's attention, persons of interest or concerns. Um, potential persons of concern. Sometimes we can get very narrow scoped. If you was to ask me, so who poses the greatest risk? Well, I could tell you it's a mid-age white male. Mid-aged white male between the ages of 20 to 36 is going to pose the greatest risk based upon the statistics of committing a, uh, an act of violence inside the church. Okay, that's, that's a fact. And you say, well, so therefore I'm going to narrow my scope and I'm going to profile everybody who fits that, that, that key indicator and those are the ones I'm going to watch. Okay, we have to be very cautious because sometimes you never know who. The woman. People in domestic violence are working in domestic violence. You'd be surprised to probably realize and maybe you wouldn't. People say, well, it's always the male. There's been months where we've taken in 70% of our cases have been women, okay? So don't, don't lock in and think, well, this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for people that look like that, and there's another one, and then you're watching those, okay? Or we have an incident like we did, security team would be aware of an individual we're aware of that's maybe in the body, and so we're watching them, and that day we're kind of staggering our staff around to kind of keep an eye on them and to monitor them. But at the same time you're watching one individual, you have to be wary and looking because you don't know that there's not another individual. There's also an incident we had recently where one person came in and seemed to cause a disturbance and then only later to discover that there was two other people that were inside the sanctuary that were part of or with the individual. Okay, so be aware that people come in and don't get so honed in on one that you lose sight of the potential of a, of a secondary threat. All right, next. That's how I look when I don't get my coffee in the morning, right there, that top shot. That's a pretty scary shot. Isn't it? Now, see, somebody like that comes in, you're probably going to, you're probably going to flag it out pretty quick. So, so unusual emotions, anger, rage, crying, laughing at inappropriate times. I'll tell you this, the enemy in spiritual, in spiritual basis, when the enemy comes in, when you have a person who is possessed by the enemy, I'm just speaking from personal reference, when you have a person who comes in who is possessed by the enemy, they will do nothing more than to distract, disrupt, laugh, 
Hmm. Yegel, move why? They cannot listen. The enemy does not want them to hear the word of God getting into their ears. And so what does the enemy always do? He's always moving. Look for somebody who's restless inside a service. It's, it might be more than conviction. But look at somebody who's restless in a service and just can't sit still, hmm, huh, laughing, moving, doing. Why? The enemy is trying to preoccupy their mind so they, they cannot hear the word of truth that brings deliverance. Okay, so these are things that you need to be looking for. If you see this... And we get up and now it's, it's time, hey, get up everybody and just shake hands or it's offering time. Go flag somebody, an usher, a VIP, flag somebody and then know who your assigned counterpart is. Know who works security that day and let's relay that information to them. Hey, don't know, I'm just saying there seems to be a guy over here looks a little strange, where's he at? Okay, I'm going to say that we'll, we'll get a diagram so that you're aware of it, but just for, for sake of purpose, these, these sections should be numbered so that you know where they're at. So from your side, reading out would be one, two is the center, three is the side. And so that you can always tell people, hey, he's over there in the upper of one, okay? Up, up in the upper one, he's wearing a blue shirt. I, I don't know, he just looked a little strange. Great, give that information. Let somebody look at him and watch him. Um, nervousness, evasiveness, out of control, inappropriate clothing. You see somebody come in who's wearing concealing garments? I can tell you right now, I, I wish I would have wore a short sleeve. It's just hot outside now. And if you see somebody coming in wearing a, uh, unusual clothing, backpacks, things they're bringing in with them, you need to watch that. It's not to say that anything's going on, but those should be things that just kind of register within you that you're watching to see what are they doing with those items. So unusual behavior, remaining near vehicles out in the parking lot. Somebody who doesn't want to come into church but is waiting out near a car, leaning on it, standing there. Why? Is he waiting for somebody? Is he waiting for a domestic partner who he thinks is going to show up here at church this morning and this might be his chance to confront him? Is he waiting for somebody to not look and to leave a car unlocked? Is there somebody in the car and somebody outside the car? These are things you need to be looking for. And if you're seeing that, those should be red flags going off that you're making somebody aware. Uh, counter surveillance. Somebody who comes into the church is kind of looking around, looking up to see what you have, to see where your cameras are, to see who's kind of watching, and then you kind of, oh, hey, oh, yeah, 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 and then just kind of go back to looking around, be, be wary of that. Um, asking about pastor or patrons. When somebody comes in, hey, does Mary Jane go to church here? Okay, what does that tell you? <laughs> it tells, he's coming here selectively looking for an individual. Does that create a risk? Yes, it can. So what should you say? Oh, you know, I don't know if she's here today, so who are you? Are you related to her? Start asking those questions to get information, see how they respond. Intoxicated or under the influence, here's something I would suggest on that. People sometimes when they're, when they're suffering from an addiction are coming in, guess what? They might just get that little bit of conviction on the one day that they just sat out after a bad binge, and now it's it. They're, they've got to get their life straight. They're just, they're just sick of it, they're done of it coming in. So if you see somebody intoxicated or appears under the influence, make staff aware. If they're coming in and they're cordial, if they're coming in and they're intoxicated, you're going to watch them, but if they're coming in and they're cordial and broken and, and tentative to the word and listening, and, and then watch them, but understand that there might be a pulling of conviction by the Holy Spirit upon them that's bringing them in. Somebody who's under the influence and they're agitated, somebody who's under the influence and they're evasive, you need to flag that. Okay, that, that doesn't need, that probably needs to be addressed prior to a service time and screening them prior to letting them in here, definitely being watched, okay? And then issues like that, if you have somebody, security team members or somebody should be sitting in close proximity to that person. You don't have to identify yourself, but you should work together. If you have a VIP member, a man who says, hey, I'm willing to kind of help and assist, boom. Hey, can you just sit two rows back? Hey, I'm just going to sit right over here on this side. Why? To make sure if they try to get up, we're quick and we're out. Okay, so you have something and, and a way to address with them. Uh, people who don't keep their hands out of their pockets or the jackets. If you talk to somebody and they have something, they're going to levitate towards it naturally. If you make a person nervous and they have a gun on them and they think you know, because remember, people who have a guilty conscience think you know things that you don't know already. And if I talk to somebody and they're like, you know, kind of like this guarding, what does that tell me? I'm creating a nervous feeling on them and they are levitating towards the thing that they have. If I talk to somebody on the street and they have some dope in their pocket, you want to know where their hand goes? To their pocket. Hey, keep your hand out of your pocket. And, they're, and they're, they can't. Why? Because it keeps going back to the thing that they're trying to protect, the thing they're trying to conceal. Watch people when you address them. If you're talking to them and they're becoming offensive and they're putting their hand down, you need to be wary of that. People gravitate towards their weapons or things they're trying to conceal. Next. Okay, so when you assess, so I'm looking in. 
I'm scanning. These are the things I'm picking up on inside the church. Hey, I'm just kind of watching this. I don't know about this. So what am I doing with it? Okay, you're going to categorize it. You're basically assessing. So if you look here, green is uh, low threat level or not expected. Yellow is elevated or probable. And then red is high or expected. You can go to the next one. So green, no signs of concern or indicators of unusual and or suspicious behavior and intentions. What should I do? Continue to monitor. Oh, I've already checked out that guy. He's good. Hey, I've already kind of, yeah, I saw that guy. He seemed kind of normal. No, you keep scanning. Everybody that's walking by you, you continually scan. You don't check people off the list as if, well, they're not suspicious today. Okay, so you just constantly stay in the state of scanning. The next, the person or situation is suspicious in nature and or there are behaviors and situations present that create a concern. Um, situations present that create a concern. So what do you need to do? You need to inform team members and continue to monitor or take the appropriate action. If you see something, hmm, seemed like he was under the influence. What are we going to do? We're going to monitor. I'm going to make sure staff members are aware. I'm going to make sure we're sitting somewhere near him. And now we're going to continue to monitor. Maybe it's, it hasn't risen up to the level to ask him to leave, to do anything yet. We just need to watch and monitor, but that's yellow. Red, signs of clear suspicion aggressive or disruptive behavior or immediate concerns for the safety of the body. You need to inform the team members, call 911, and consider alerting the pastor if a safety concern for the body is present. If there is a fight, somebody attacks somebody, something goes on on the campus that is a physical crime, some kind of way, relation of information needs to come up and make its way up to the front. You can contain it, you can keep it outside, you can make a brief note, had an incident outside, it's contained, just making you aware. Okay, pastor needs to be made aware. It can at least be here. Now the, the, the elder that's there can make the determination. Do I tell pastor now or do I wait? Do I flag him for a second and call him to the edge of the stage, whisper in his ear and let him get back to preaching? Or can I just hold that information and be aware? Okay, so, but you need to make sure that that's getting up there. So how are we going to respond? So you're scanning, you're assessing, and then you're going to respond. How are we going to respond? Well, we're going to cover a couple ways here. We'll take a break in a second, give you some snacks, and then we'll cover a couple ways.